morning, church. Good morning. I guess everybody's socializing out back. Hopefully they'll just come in fairly quickly because we have a great performance for you this morning. The stage looks a little different, so uh, we aren't going to let Jim talk too much today. <laughs> But good morning. Uh, my name is Mason Jones. I'm your pastor's assistant. Uh, a few things, a few house rules first is we have a welcome card, so please take that and fill it out for us. Let us know uh, if you're here. If you're new, welcome. We're excited to have you here. Uh, so let us know that as well. We're not going to bother you, uh, but, uh, but we do want to know that you were here. And then uh, most importantly, on the back of this, is put, on, put your prayer request down. So put these down. We have a lot of folks who pray for these during the week. And uh, this will go in the basket at the end of service. And uh, if you have some praise reports, you can put those on there as well. And then uh, if you are a regular attender of the church, you should know what this is. But, uh, it is your offering envelope. So uh, go ahead and fill that out for us. And let us know if you're donating uh, to one of our um, uh, ministries. Last night, uh, we had our hot dog and bingo night. And I was told we had about 40-some people here eating hot dogs and playing bingo. I don't know who won, but, uh, but uh, what's that about you? <laughs> but, uh, but I heard it was a great time, and uh, even uh, one, one person actually uh, uh, gave $100 to the, to the cause for outreach. And that all goes towards baskets and uh, helping the less fortunate throughout the year. So thanks for all you guys who supported that. Um, hopefully you ate plenty of hot dogs. So, uh, some of the things that are coming up here in the weeks ahead is uh, on Tuesday night I have a renewed Bible study. Uh, the address should be in your bulletin. If not, you can see me afterwards. We're doing a great study on crazy love uh, by Francis Chan uh, that's challenging all of us. So, uh, you can come join every week's new subject. So, uh, feel free to come and bang on my door. And then on Wednesday nights here at the church, they're doing their Bible reading revolution. Over in the uh, fellowship hall, and the, they're uh, getting through the Bible in a year, so uh, and doing fellowship with that, and have a lot of fun. So come check that out. And then next Saturday at Paris Hills Park, if you want to come help us, we're going to be uh, cleaning up the park that starts at 8 a.m. Helping the city uh, uh, do some of the uh, cleanup there, and uh, you can sign up in the lobby. I think there's a sign-up sheet uh, probably on the little uh, whatever condens. I don't know. What you call it. You can sign up over there. Uh, I call the furniture in my house on stuff too, just ask for money. But anyways, you can do that. And then uh, next Sunday, JJ and I are going to be up about 4 a.m. Yes. We're going to have pancakes and coffee or something, I think. Right, is that what we're doing? Oh, no. Yeah, you're bringing it. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Your, your pastor, JJ, and our Impact Worship Band and myself are going to be out at uh, North, uh, the First Baptist Church that over by Ralph's, that's east of Ralph's, uh, on State Street. And uh, we're going to be watching the sun come up, and JJ's going to uh, do a, a jig, I think, and probably talk or something. I don't know. Anyways, he's going to be the pastor for that, so come out and support that and support uh, the multiple churches that are going to be putting that on. And if you haven't seen the sun come up on Easter Sunday, it sure uh, warms your heart as well. So that's going on. And of course, next Sunday is our Easter celebration here. Uh, so don't miss that. Have your friends come. And uh, I'm sure Jim will have a great message. But like I said, we're not letting him talk too much today. So, uh, <laughs> But anyways, with all that said, we're going to start our play. If you haven't seen this before, it's an awesome uh, play. If you've seen it before, it's awesome as well. And uh, so enjoy that, and then uh, we'll be back with you afterwards. In fact, how many of you have uh, ever seen the, this enactment of, of the Living Lord's Supper? That you've seen it? Okay, okay. Uh, some of you have it. And, and so what we're doing is uh, we're making a, a preposition that uh, this is what may have happened uh, at, at that last supper. And, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy it immensely. Uh, you're going to hear some things that's going to change your heart. And uh, it's going to be pretty exciting. It, it all began in 1494. The Duke of Milan uh, contracted with Leonardo da Vinci to 
uh, paint a, an inspirational mural on, on uh, the convent of Santa Maria. And, and uh, eventually thought about that. And he came up with the idea that he would capture the, the, the sense of the feel, the emotion uh, of the disciples at that very moment where Jesus said, one of you shall betray me. So we're going to listen in now on what happens uh, from that moment on. this last meal with you for after this I have to go prepare a place for you so that where I am you, you may be also truly truly I say to you before the night is over one of you will betray me what? 
Listen as the disciples share with us their very thoughts of what Christ has just said. I am Andrew, brother of Simon Peter. I was the first to bring someone to the Lord when I brought Peter to Jesus. <clears throat> I am also the one who found the lad that day that Jesus fed the 5,000 with the five loaves and the two fish. Watching him feed so many with so little made me glad in my heart that I decided to serve him by, as myself. He must have seen something in me of value that the others didn't see, for he chose me to be one of the twelve apostles. <clears throat> we have seen many a triumph and many a tragedy. I may not have been on the inner circle as Peter, but I've been a loyal companion and friend to my Lord. What greater gift of life could be afforded to a fisherman? But now, one of us is to betray him? Who could it be? How could it be? Who in his heart could do this and get away with it? But then I must ask myself, is it me, Andrew? Is it I, Lord? Is it I? My name is James. I'm the brother of John. My brother and I, we chose to go with Jesus after he came to us one day while we were mending our fishing nets down by the Sea of Galilee. He came to us and made a simple request saying, follow me. I was with Jesus once. We were in the house of Jairus. And I watched the master raise that man's little daughter from the sleep of death. And another time, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, John, and I all saw Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah. We were amazed. Just the other day, John and I, we went to Jesus. We made a request to him, saying, Lord, grant us one to sit at your right hand, the other at your left, when you come into your glorious kingdom. Jesus looked at us and asked, Are you able to drink from the cup that I'm about to drink? Well, we both replied, Lord, yes, of course we are. That's when Jesus gently reminded us that he who would be first must first be a servant to all. And then the master demonstrated his very words by kneeling down before all of us and washing our feet before supper. During these years of following Jesus, he's taught us that God's way, God's way is always one of love, yet now he's to be betrayed by one of the very ones he loves? How can this be? Why? Why, I ask you, would any one of us want to do such a thing? But then deep down inside my own heart, I have to ask myself, is it I, James, who betrays Jesus? Lord, is it I? Is it I? My name is Matthew, and I was a tax collector at the gates of Jerusalem. When Jesus came to me and said, follow me, I had mixed emotions, for I was a very important man, and to follow him meant losing my prestige and worldly possessions. I knew that nothing would ever be the same again if I followed Jesus, but my heart longed for something that only he could fill. When Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, all of the confusion and unrest of my soul left. Then I knew that Jesus was to be the Lord and Savior of my life.
My name is Philip, and I come from Basadia in Galilee. While well, several of my friends and I were in Bethany listening to John the Baptist, Jesus called us to become his disciples. After many close years of fellowship with Jesus, my faith in God has grown stronger and deeper. I can remember so well before he fed the 5,000 with only five loaves and two fish, asking him and, and the others, where are we to buy bread that all these people can eat? Little did I know that my brother Andrew was already sending a little lad to Jesus. After listening to Jesus preach that God is our Heavenly Father, it was almost beyond my understanding. However, now I can say that he who has seen Jesus has seen the Father. It is shocking, however, to know that there is a traitor in our midst. Does this traitor not know that in betraying Jesus, he's also betraying God? Could one of our number... Be so blind. Who can it be, Lord? Is it Philip? Is it I? I am Thomas. Many people think of me as a doubter, but deep down I'm not. It's just that I demand proof before I believe. I recall the day when Mary and Martha sent word to our Lord that their brother Lazarus was dead. Jesus said, let us go to him. We knew opposition was growing, and many of you, the disciples, did not want to go into Bethany. But I spoke up. I said, let us go with him that we may die with him. Why do you remember my fear and not my faith? I can still see Jesus standing on the shores of the Galilee, rebuking the gusty winds, healing the sick, allowing the deaf to hear, the blind to see, cleansing the lepers, preaching the gospel to the poor. Yes, opposition is growing. And his enemies are determined to kill him. And why? Because the God he preaches of is greater than the petty man-made deities are. And yet... Even amongst us, the chosen twelve, he says there is a traitor. Is he speaking of me? Is it I, Lord? Is it I? I am John. Jesus called me to follow him while I was mending fishing nets with my father Zebedee and my brother James. What a wonderful change in my life since I met Jesus. For he taught me that love is the key to life. And that's true, for it was love, God's wonderful love. It caused me to follow Jesus.
And now that that love has touched my life, I suddenly realize that Jesus came to live and die, that I, John, might have eternal life. But oh, how it hurts to hear him say that one of us would betray that love. Oh, Lord, I wonder, is it I? Is it I? My name is James, but since it's a familiar name, I'm called James the Less. I shall never forget the day that I first saw the Master. I was traveling down the road near the place where John was baptizing. I saw Jesus ask John to baptize him. And after John had baptized the Lord, the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And we heard a voice say, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Ever since the day that Jesus first called me, I have been a devoted disciple. And now, one of us is to betray him? Surely this is madness. Surely the betrayer must be out of his mind. But I keep asking myself, is it I? Is it I, Lord? I am Thaddeus. <laughs> Jesus chose the twelve of us to become the cornerstones of the new kingdom. Just as the twelve tribes of Israel were the cornerstones of the old Jewish kingdom. Now, I remember after a night of prayer, Jesus called us to him and gave us authority over unclean spirits. And then commissioned us to go forth and preach that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. I was in Jerusalem when he gave that great invitation. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Now, who came to share man's burdens, had the burdens thrust upon him that one of us would betray him. Which one of us could it be? Or will all of us betray him before this night is over? Philip, Peter, Judas, and John, and even I, Thaddeus? Is it I, Lord? Is it I? My name is Nathaniel. Like many of the others, I'm a fisherman. I was a disciple of John the Baptizer. There was my friend Philip who came and said, We have found him, the one who Moses and the law and the prophets wrote. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? I said, Not in scorn. But the town was such a little insignificant place, I wonder why God had placed his anointed in her midst. However, Philip said, Come and see. When I saw Jesus, said, Behold, an Israelite, whom there is no guide. How do you know me? I asked. He answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under a fig tree. The master is actually telling me he knew me ever since the day I was born. That's all I needed. I believed. You know, I don't know who it would be to betray the anointed one of God. Could it be me? Is it I? Is it I? I am Simon the Zealot. Before Jesus called me, I belonged to a group of hot headed, bloodthirsty revolutionaries known as the Zealots. We were all for the armed rebellion against Rome and the reestablishment of King David's glorious kingdom of Israel. But now, Jesus has told me about another kind of kingdom. The kingdom of the human heart, where God reigns supremely. Since I've heard him, he has shown me that the conquest of the heart is the true, sincere, and lasting conquest. I have unconditionally and completely surrendered my life to him, this surrender has not imprisoned me. Rather, for the first time in my life, it has set me free. I am no longer afraid. Rome is mighty. But God, he is almighty. And now the master says there is a spiritual Roman among us? Are you kidding me? One who will attempt by force will can only be conquered through love? Hmm. Who can it be? Is it Matthew, the tax collector? Maybe it's Peter, the fisherman. I know, it's his brother Andrew. I don't know. Or does the Lord suspect me since I am the only former zealot among us? Lord, let it not be me. Is it I, Lord? Is it I? All the others come from Galilee. My home is in the village of Karath, in Judea. Hence, I am known as Judas Iscariot. All the others must have had confidence in me because they elected me their treasure, despite what they say behind my back about my stinginess, impatience, ambition. Jesus believed in me. If he hadn't, he would have chose someone else in my place. 
Some say that I appropriated these funds for my own use and that Jesus' words about the love of money and greed were personally directed at me. Still, others keep reminding me that Jesus was referring to me when he said that I choose you twelve and one of you is a devil. Certainly I complained when Mary washed his feet with that expensive ointment perfume. I still think it was a waste of money. And if I conspired with the chief priest, and if I have 30 pieces of silver on me, that's my affair. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. But someone had to force the issue, make him assert himself as God's Messiah. He refused to make a move. Well, I made one. What would you do if you were in my place and wanted him to do something dramatic and startling to usher in his kingdom? What would you do? Should I, like the others, piously, self-righteously ask? Is it I? Is it I? Lord, I know the power of the blood of the Lamb. The cleansing glow of Calvary redeemed fallen man. Though you were rejected and your love was more than tested, you carried on. Lord, you left your father, came to set me free. Life you laid yours down as a ransom just for me. Jesus, I'm so grateful that your love's been more than faithful. Oh, your grace is still amazing. Oh, your grace is still amazing. Oh, fishermen. I've been with the Lord these past years and seen him do many miraculous things. I saw him walk on the water and he allowed me to walk out to him on the water. Though I failed, I can still remember what it felt like in that moment of time. What an amazing experience. I know he is the son of God. The master said I will deny knowing him. I can't believe that I would do such a thing. Yet he's never wrong, and he never lies. Oh, this distresses me so. The master has said one of us will betray him. Was he referring to me when he said one of you will betray me? If I knew who the scoundrel was, I'd pierce his heart or cut out his tongue with my dagger. Perhaps it would be my own heart that I would pierce. God, I pray that it not be so. Yet I keep wondering and saying to myself, Lord, is it I? Is it I? John. 
He was in the exile in the island of Patmos after escaping without injury from being thrown into a pot of boiling oil. He died at a great age, some say in excess of 90 years old. Peter. Nero put Peter to death along with many other saints. Jerome tells us that he was crucified upside down. Peter requested to die this way because he said, I'm not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as my Lord. His wife also suffered martyrdom. Andrew. He was crucified at Odessa on a cross shaped like the letter X. Tradition says he preached to his persecutors until he died. James the Elder. He was put to death by Herod Agrippa in Jerusalem. As James was led away to the place of martyrdom, his accuser was present, and when he saw the apostles' extraordinary courage, he fell to his knees to request forgiveness, and he himself became a Christian. And then because he didn't want James to receive the crown of martyrdom alone, he too was killed. Philip, he suffered martyrdom in Paragon. He was scourged, thrown into prison, and afterwards crucified. Nathaniel. He was cruelly beaten and crucified upside down. Thomas. While preaching at Cormadale in the East Indies, he angered the pagan priest and he was martyred by being thrust through with a spear. Matthew. He suffered martyrdom from being slain with a sword at a distant city in Ethiopia. James the Less. He was thrown from the highest point of the temple and then beaten to death with a club. Thaddeus. He was crucified at Odessa by being skinned alive. Simon. He was crucified at Judea. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, laid down his life through sacrifice on Calvary. The perfect Lamb of God who knew no sin, yet took upon himself all the sin of all mankind that we might be redeemed. What an incredible price Jesus paid for our salvation. And what a great price so many others have paid to preserve the gospel and bring it to us that we might believe and be saved. You may have noticed that Judas was the only one who didn't die a martyr's death. That's because he was the one who betrayed Jesus. And by that very act, he set his own life on an altogether different course, where he excluded heaven as being an option in his life. But I have good news for you. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter what you haven't done. Jesus shed his blood for you. Jesus died for you. Jesus paid the ultimate price with his life so that you and I can have salvation, eternal life in heaven with him. And that's where we come to today. We come to a place where we have to make a decision. And I think today is the day of decision. And the decision has to do with your eternal life. What you do and how you do it. 
and whether or not you can recognize that you're guilty of sin and that the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can wash you and cleanse you, restore you, and empower you to be a follower of his. So I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning to just open up your heart and say, Lord, would you come into my life? Will you forgive me of my sin? Will you become my Lord and Savior? I can tell you something that's pretty startling. In the millions and millions and millions and multiplied millions more of men and women, boys and girls who said, Lord, would you come into my life? Will you forgive me of my sin? Will you be my Lord and Savior? Not one time has God said, no, not going to do it. God, 100% of the time, has extended salvation and forgiveness. So if you're sitting here today saying, well, you know what, I really lived a bad life and, and uh, even there's no way that anyone can forgive me. If they really knew what I did, Jesus says, I know all things and I know what you've done. And my blood is strong enough to forgive you and to redeem you and to set you free. Amen. So I'm going to start over here on my right, on your left, and uh, if there's anyone in this section right here who just want to say yes to Jesus Christ, you want to say, you know what, I, 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 I'm tired of following the way of this world. I, 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 I want to change my life. If that describes you, let me just see your hand right up and right now. You want to say yes to Jesus Christ. Anyone at all in this section? In this middle section, you want to say yes to Jesus Christ. I see that hand there. That hand there is there. Thank you, Lord, right here. Thank you. Back there across the back, yes, and over there. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Over here on my left, on your right, you want to say yes to Jesus Christ. I see that hand right there. Amen. Who else? Someone else. Someone else wants to say yes to Jesus Christ. All across that back, anyone on that back row, way back there. Well, let's stand together. There were about 12 people who said yes to Jesus Christ. Let's do it. And uh, just to cover all bases and to make sure that you are saved yourself, even though you didn't raise your hand, you probably should have, but if you didn't, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Come into my life. And be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let me say something to you. If you utter those words, you're born again. Jesus doesn't take those words lightly. He doesn't say that they're not really sincere. He, he just hears those words, and he releases salvation to you. Sometimes people say, well, you know what? I, I, I need to change. I need to become a better person before I even try to come into God's kingdom. God says, don't wait. Come now. Come just as you are. I'll teach you how to be a follower of mine. You just come now. And so I, I'm so excited for today, and I'm so excited for you, especially you who rose, rose, raised your hand, because you're in for one of the most amazing journeys that you'll ever experience. It'll be life-changing in every facet of your life, and, and I'm so excited for that for you. Wow. We're going to do something uh, also that's going to be uh, refreshing for you. We're going to share in communion now. So, ushers, if you would go get the communion elements. Let's just go ahead and be seated. And, and they're going to pass out the communion elements. And then uh, Jesus is going to lead us in.
Palm Sunday. And, uh, and uh, as I said in the first service, uh, JJ had no idea what I was going to talk about with the song he was playing, actually. Uh, it's a little bit about what I want to tell you guys today. Have you ever been, have you ever had a time in your life where you wished uh, you hadn't done something or maybe you wanted somebody else to do that instead of you? I bet you all can think of something. I've said a hundred times at Bible study or in church that sometimes I share more than I probably should, but when I was like 10 or 12 years old, I'll never forget that I was with some of my buddies in a grocery store and they dared me to steal a hot wheel bar. I could pay for the hot wheel car. It was no big deal, but it was a dare. <laughs> and I took that car. And as soon as I walked out the door, surely the store manager grabbed a hold of me. <laughs> and at that moment, I thought, probably, I probably thought that I wish it was one of those guys and not me. My dad, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, very forgiving when you made mistakes. <laughs> I probably couldn't sit down for a couple days, but... <laughs> But at that moment, I wished it was somebody else. In our uh, our Bible study, our crazy love, this past week we talked a little bit about the Garden of Gethsemane, and uh, and after all this happens, a few other events happen, and then Jesus obviously goes to Gethsemane. Gethsemane, if you if you read the Bible in Matthew around uh, chapter twenty six, uh, and he goes to Gethsemane with some of the disciples. And stops and has them uh, start to pray for him. And he goes a little farther. He gets on his knees and, uh, you know, he's sweating a little bit of uh, blood, they say. Blood drips a little bit from him. And he asks, he asks his father if there's any way possible for somebody else or if there's any way possible that I don't have to go through this. I know it's your will, but And he does that like three times. And I'm paraphrasing. You can read the actual words in the Bible. But, uh, you know, he's, he's just asking the Father, boy, if there's any way possible, any other way. But he knows that he has to do this for us. And I've said a hundred times, I, I have kids, and you guys have kids, or you guys have people you love. And, I mean, I can't imagine doing that with my folks and people that I love. I just can't imagine and I can't imagine that discussion between him and his father. I mean, he knows what's going to happen. Both of them do. But they know that it's got to happen in order for us to all have our sins forgiven and given us eternal life. And that crazy love during that time. I mean, if you close your eyes and just think about the two of them thinking about all of us, that's a crazy love that he has for us. And so, in our Bible study, he actually, he actually has us think about want us to think about when we're going through tough times or good times or even mundane times, think about the cross, think about that love, think about all that's going on. When I go watch baseball, lately I've been spending a lot of time just from this Bible study alone looking at trees and branches and snow on mountains. It's just a different world. And I challenge all of you guys to think about that. Think about that moment. Those two I mean, this morning we thought about those two had to have such a crazy love for us to crazily do that. And they get it for all of us. So I challenge you guys throughout the week, months, years ahead, hopefully I changed your life. <laughs> I mean, Jim mentioned, you know, the first time that I, I uh, got baptized, um, he mentioned that all you guys who accepted Jesus this morning, your life will change and you don't even have to do anything. Because I tell you, when I did it, I went home, I was in Colorado, I went home, had no clue what was going on. But my life completely changed. So, um, with all that said this morning, we're going to take the bread which represents Jesus' body and break it. And we're going to take the cup which represents the blood he poured out for us for our forgiveness. My prayer for you this morning is just to thank you for that moment in time. If you haven't read the Bible, start reading the Bible. It's a great love letter to you. That's what uh, Keith Johnson reminds
reminds me all the time, it's a great love letter to you. If you read it as a love letter, it's a great love letter to you. And just read that. And this morning we'll bow our heads and I'm going to pray for you, Lord. Thank you so, so much for this beautiful day and this Palm Sunday. Thank you for this congregation. Thank you for this uh, uh, plentiful of servants we had this morning to display your last supper, Lord. I, I lift them all up to you this morning. And I know that they all had plenty of agendas and things they needed to do, but you cleared the path for them to be here this morning for us, Lord. And I thank you for that. I can't thank you enough for reminding us every day about the cross. In some way, form, you always remind us that you are there for us, open arms, to hug us, to love us, to just be there. And I can't imagine that day, Lord, that I, I just can't imagine or fathom that day, but the crazy love that you give us, Lord, is so unreal and makes me feel so comfortable. Lord. As we go from here this morning, Lord, I just ask that you be with each and every one of the folks in here, and even the folks that are watching online, or the folks that couldn't make it here today, Lord, and just continue to remind them how much you love them. Bless the weeks ahead, Lord, and bring us back safely next week on Easter Sunday. Amen. 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 Thank you. Did these guys do a great job? Or what?
Yeah. Now let's stand and uh, let me pray for the offering and, and uh, we'll receive it. Uh, for our guest, uh, uh, we, we, we didn't invite you here so that we can get some money from you. So if you're uh, uh, uncomfortable giving, that's fine. You, you don't have to. Uh, we just want to bless you and let you know that Jesus Christ loves you. Father, we come before you and we stand in your presence even again, Lord, and we receive this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a shadow on the light of how you won't climb up up and have to There's a wall you won't